Hello and welcome to the Hard Part Podcast. My name is Alex Holmes. I am your host on the show. And as ever, this is a podcast that marries the intersection of masculinity and mental health and focuses on self-leadership and personal work in order to help us to be better men and focused on what it means to be men of tomorrow rather than limiting ourselves to being men of yesterday. Again, as I said, my name is Alex Holmes and I'm happy to be here. So the I've put out an episode yesterday and I think that this will be a slow burn in that I am reintroducing myself to the rest of the world. And there are previous episodes on this podcast feed that you can go back to back when the podcast was called Time to Talk. And on that podcast, I did have conversations um, around mental health and well-being that weren't necessarily specific to men's mental health, but um, they were good conversations around mental health nonetheless. So if you are going back to the feed and thinking, why are there other podcasts that um, have different names or a different energy, a different feel, then that is why uh, it was a different podcast. <laughs> um, so on this podcast, we will be speaking about uh, men's mental health and how that intersects with masculinity and what that looks like for us, how we can embody and embrace our healing journeys going forward, how we can navigate through some of the difficult conversations that um, accompany and follow us around as men generally, um, how we can have better interactions with ourselves personally, um, other men, other women, other NBs, and what this looks like for creating a society of change and how we can step into um, our real authenticity as men so that we can have these proper and um, deepening, compassionate conversations around what it means to live healthy and authentic lives. Um, so figured it'd be good just to have a bit of a roundup just to see um for me to introduce myself pretty much to everybody as a new entity so if you are returning then welcome um it's been amazing to have you on the journey with me and i'm sorry i've kept you waiting for so long um i stopped the podcast around 18 months ago stopped podcasting generally um around 18 months ago and it was a big thing for me to sit back and just think about what it is that I actually wanted to bring to the table, what kind of conversations I wanted to have. And there were a lot of um, men's podcasts that were coming out, a lot of conversations around what it means to be a man, but a lot of them were not necessarily focusing on the impacts of masculinity on both men and other people. It was all about how we can maintain and hold on to a lot of pretty harmful ideas around masculinity that was really challenging me. And the people, there were a lot of people that were buying into it and co-opting it. And, um, and, and there were times where I will just put my hands up. There were times where I had been um, struggling with trying to understand what it means to be a man today um, and what it means to what that looks like for me going forward um so in my conversations with a lot of men both as clients and as family and as friends and trying to figure out exactly um where i stand in that where everybody else is at the moment um it kind of drew me to bring my conversations to the podcast so that we can have this chat around um mental health without it being um a us versus them conversation um i think it's me to be leaning into what we can do as a community of people to allow us to have better conversations um because these conversations are hard and they require a level of sensitivity they require a level um a level of care as well as um you know the courage to go and explore the dark spaces and the spaces that are quite challenging for us to 
um, to get to a lot of the times. Um, so I figured that this episode I probably would be doing a bit of an overview um, as to what where I'm coming from and what that means and what it means for me. Um, and then as the podcast episodes go through and go on, um, I would love to just deepen and go further to allow for more conversation. You know, get conversation with guests, you know, with with listeners like yourself who want to know more, who want to learn more and who are curious. Um, I really want to see what minds are curious out there and who has the questions that they really want to ask. Um, and I don't shy away from a lot of questions. I try my best to answer as honestly and as authentically as possible. Um, and if I don't know an answer um, to a question, then I'll say I don't know an answer to a question, but I will always endeavor to try and find out. If not, bring somebody onto the show who can speak to that. Um, so yeah, so let's start with a bit about me. Um, as I said, I'm Alex Holmes. I am a coach and a therapist, and I've been working in the area uh, for just under seven years. No, just under 10 years, around seven years. Um, and I've been working in wellbeing for around 10 years. Um, I began as a journalist working in the typical newsbeat, and then I ended up moving over to wellbeing, where I started to become really interested in mental health and wellbeing. Um, and I recognized that there wasn't a lot of conversations being had about men's mental health, which drove me to uh, start a column called Men Talk Health. And uh, I started interviewing a lot of different men about their particular experiences. So that meant looking at diabetes, looking at um, cancer, looking at mental health, fitness, grief. A lot of different um, men were coming to me to be able to speak to me about um, a lot of this this stuff. And um, so I did that and then I left journalism. It wasn't the best um experience for me so i left journalism and then the pandemic happened but during the pandemic i was writing my book um which a lot of these topics are loosely based around um called time to talk how men think about love belonging and connection so i began writing my book during the pandemic and i was becoming more and more overwhelmed and i'll get into some of that a bit after but um I recognized that there were a lot of men who during the pandemic were experiencing deep um, mental health disturbances. Um, and then I realized also that, you know, child abuse was going up. Um, domestic violence cases were increasing. You know, suicide attempts were becoming a bit more prevalent. People were going missing. It was a lot of um sadness and a lot of fear and a lot of worry on top of the virus that was going on um and in the time and i thought to myself my mental health is not doing very well right now um i'm in therapy and i want to make sure that i can actually help and support people so i began training and i began training i went into doing the mental health first aid courses which in the uk is um like, you know, some training for the everyday person to be able to kind of, you know, signpost people uh, through the other workplaces and um, in everyday life, it's actually quite useful um, to getting people um, into care. So basically, you know, when you do first aid, you can, you can put them in preventative measures and then call the ambulance and the ambulance will come. It's the same thing for mental health first aid. Um, you know, you can recognize when certain things are happening and you can begin to signpost and know who to contact and who to call. That was triggered by two of my friends going through uh, psychosis during the pandemic. And I felt very helpless. I didn't know what to do. I didn't think that I could, um, that I had the resources or the tools to do anything. Um, so I went and did the mental health first aid course. Um, learned a ton of information that I didn't know but then I didn't really know what I wanted to do next with regards to applying it so um, I went down the path of becoming a coach which meant that I trained as a health coach 
and with a special focus on men's health and well-being. Um, so that's looking at prostate cancers, you know, pattern boldness, loads of different things um, in that sense. Um, and I became really attached to the coaching relationship um, and the, the, the therapeutic relationship that comes with coaching. And um, I went on to then study uh, to become a psychotherapist. And, and through that training in psychotherapy, I'm also trained as a hypnotherapist, which has been transformational for me um, as both a client and a practitioner. And that's brought me down to this space. So working with men and working in men's mental health and men's well-being, I've navigated several pathways that will hopefully and have, you know, according to what I've been told to me um, by clients and people that I've worked with in workplaces and working with young boys in schools has helped them understand themselves in a way that has been quite instrumental and dedicated to um, a lot of people's uh, progress and their healing and their education about themselves and learning who they are in a lot of different areas, um, as well as allowing me to develop a sense of self and you know figure out where my foot footholds are and where I'm missing my step and where my blind spots are as well because the one thing that I will say is that when you have coaches and therapists online and they come to this space it's so important to recognize and understand that they are not perfect they just have knowledge of a particular thing and that particular thing um is the human mind and the human body and what this looks like and um and its limitations and its expansiveness right and but we are human as well so i do go through times where i'm not feeling very um whether my out my external attitude is not matching up with my internal attitude and that we is that is what we call congruence um there are days where I have negative reactions to things and I'm just in a uh, reaction mode when in a day to day I can be a bit more compassionate to a lot of different people and a lot of different experiences. Um, so I am a multifaceted human being like most therapists. Um, and I think that the internet really has this has this quality to it where it says things like, you know, where it expects you to be perfect, or it expects you to, you know, where you're expected to be one way. And um, when you're not that way, kind of like it makes you feel like you're, you're being less authentic to yourself. And, um, and that's one thing I don't really, this is one thing and one reason why I stepped away from the podcast and I stepped away from content creation for a while was just because I didn't necessarily feel like I was being very congruent and I was trying to portray myself as one kind of person while off mic and behind the screen, I wasn't living at work. So a lot of this stuff that I am doing now and the kind of places that I've got to now internally and externally is that I am a, a work in progress as most adults and most humans are and continue to be and b i have learned a variety of skills that allowed me to help people work through their own shit to understand that they are also working progresses too and um i approach a lot of this stuff as you would expect with a lot of compassion um, and curiosity i am open to learning and being um, and recognizing new areas and new things that I probably would not have been able to articulate like five or six, seven years ago. Um, or so. so there is a lot that I have learned in my seven to 10 years. Um, and there will always be more that I'm willing to learn. I'm going to learn about myself, the world and others at the same time. Um, and that's just that's the level of compassion i want you to have when you're listening and watching this i want you to feel like you're on a journey to understanding yourself um i have conversations with a lot of people on a day-to-day -day basis um days where i'm bantering days where i'm you know, making jokes and knowing and you know my nature is to tease my nature is to do all of that stuff um especially when i'm with my clients a lot of the time like we 
once we get to know each other and we learn who we are, you know, there is a there is a connection of teasing and playing playfulness and whatnot. And it's understanding things of those nature around, you know, boundaries and um, processes. So I do think that there's so much room for that in this conversation, especially when it comes to men's mental health. Um, we we kind of make the, the, the content and the conversation very serious, which is why the, the title of the podcast is the hard part is having the conversation. But once you actually start to sit down and have the conversation, it's actually quite useful. Um, and you learn quite a lot in that as well. Um, so yeah, as I said, I wrote uh, this book called Time to Talk, which is here, which is, very, which is my battered copy. And uh, within it, um, I you know i i spoke to a lot of, i wrote it as a journalist but i spoke to a lot of men i have my own personal story in there my mental health story i have stories from other men that i know and have met along the way um and it was a big piece of work around um first of all combating the real man myths which are you know real men don't doubt themselves real men are fearless go-getters um Real men don't cry, real men have no worries, real men never fail, and real men are lone wolves. Um, but I'm going through themes of self-doubt, self-acceptance, compassion, self-love, vulnerability, and I have loads of thoughts around this current culture of vulnerability being used as, you know, men need vulnerability, but there are steps to that, and I will work through those steps too health and body image as you said as i said i'm a health coach so it was very important that the health is important i really want a lot of men to understand how we view ourselves has to be outside of um what other people want us to look like you know so are we going to the gym? Are we keeping fit? Are we keeping active? Because we want to do that and we want to remain um, strong and have bodies that we can see out through the rest of our lives. Or is it because we want other people to witness us as strong? And I think that there are, you know, there are competing thoughts with that. And I definitely want to get somebody on to speak to that conversation as well. Um, and also like looking at success and failure. And when I'm doing my self-leadership coaching with leaders in um, companies and corporate spaces, I delve right into, you know, success and failure when it comes to that like what does that mean how do we regulate ourselves when we don't necessarily achieve the things that we want to achieve um why are we so attached to those achievements what does that achievement say about us and our status in the world um achievements are good things generally how we relate to them though is another so that's pretty much where I'm coming from. So I'm doing a lot of research. I'm doing a lot of work in men's health. I'm doing a lot of um, taking a lot of time, especially as a hypnotherapist, um, to create, um, you know, specific ways of working with men. Um, so I'm really glad that you guys are just on this journey with me to help me, um, you know, talk through my processes as well as share with me some of the stuff that's going on with you guys and i would love to make this a much more interactive um experience so that everybody can kind of be part of the conversation because again as i said in the in the introdu introduction trailer episode is that when we understand that men have the capacity to change and the capacity to change things and impact things for the good um, and for the benefit of all people and everybody else, and by first changing ourselves, we could actually create such magic in this world. But right now, we are not quite there yet. Um, and I think that that's something that I'm really obsessed with um, exploring and looking at when it comes to um, our well being and the things that we do. So that kind of leads me on to our next bit where it's. So I'm looking and thinking around why now and why men. Um, as I said, I wrote my book, it, that matters to me. Um, relationships and friendship and self-leadership all matter to me. 
and and you know within my book i touch on all of those themes like i mentioned um and that's why i want to build this conversation a bit more around it um especially as this is entering its third year the, the zeitgeist i think it's very um important that we start we really start to look at the emotional lives of men and when we begin to understand what that means and what that looks like from how we interact with our relationships our romantic relationships or how we navigate and challenge our friendships um, our relationships with our fathers our sons our daughters our cousins our colleagues our, and just acquaintances and people that we meet out in the road like what does that mean and how does that impact the way that we lead ourselves as well as how we become functioning people in society too um the next thing is that i i do believe that men need to change our relationship to therapy and coaching and i think that there's this idea that therapy is not for men coaching is um and i've always said that they work hand in hand sometimes you can have both a coach both a therapist who's a coach um and a coach while you're in therapy um and i think that that's important to be able to really give yourself a breadth of allowing yourself to do the work and go deep but again there you know that can also be something where you're doing too much of it like when you're consistently analyzing and being and, and having um, a forensic look at yourself that can be quite damaging to your um, your own mental health and well-being and your sense of self as well if you consistently need the need to be you know under the microscope all the time then you need to be able to lead yourself out. and that's where a lot of my coaching and therapy comes in as well is you know yes you are working and we're working on the stuff that you need to work on but the goal is for you to have the tools and resources so you can lead yourself in the world and you know recent studies have shown that men are less likely to seek mental health support um especially as they're reducing the way that they interact with their friendships um especially um with regards to their romantic relationships um understanding trauma dumping a lot of vocabulary that men just don't have access to at this stage and general attitudes beliefs and thoughts and feelings that come up that aren't being processed in the right way as well as you know a large percentage of men um, are struggling with autism um adhd um, other other neurodivergences you know and there are a lot of therapists who aren't necessarily skilled up on that and you know and they do kind of have an approach that isn't really beneficial for men a lot of the time which kind of throws a lot of men off which then puts men in a space where they are saying that they don't have they never had a good experience with therapy so they don't go and they don't believe in it um and you know leads them down a path away from actually seeking the support and seeking the help that they have so i'm very big on getting men to understand that you know just because you didn't have the best experience the first time um it's always good to try to have conversations and figure out how you can get back get back on the horse and um explore and have a different experience with a different therapist because that might be something that works for you um because it's usually a relationship challenge as well and you know a relationship with your coach and your therapist is important um and um I work specifically with male friendly approaches to therapy um, when I'm working with men and I work and you know, I utilize positive masculinity too so not a big fan of shaming I don't like it um I really want to work with men to make sure that they understand that they are both seen valued and heard in these spaces but also that they are challenged to make sure that they are doing the work that they need to do for themselves to get them to the places that they want to be um and it matters to society as well um men are more likely to you know experience um deaths of despair which are um really challenging things for people that experience that from family members and friends um and 
men are often diagnosed with prostate cancer. And, you know, in the UK, there's around 12,000 men um, dying of the disease each year. Um, and that's like one man every 45 minutes. And that's something that we need to we need to look at as well. But the gender disparities um, are widening, especially when it comes to on a generational level with Gen Z boys um, having differing attitudes to, um, to dating, to uh, friendships, um, to loneliness and what this means for millennials, what this means for Gen X is um, just fundamental different values on what it means to connect with one another. And I think that we're not really connecting in the way that we that we should as well. Um, and a lot of men don't know how to act, don't know how to be. And it's, it's definitely something to explore and to look at. And that is important because loneliness is really key especially with regards to the coping mechanisms that come with it um, because it can just beget more violence um, and more loneliness and more deaths and more pain um, and so how do we find out where we go from here and uh, you know looking at men's and boys health we have to understand that it matters and it impacts the lives of every individual in society if we aren't you know, attuned to our changes um, as much as we should be. Um, yeah, and it should matter to everybody because if you were to ask yourself, when was the last time you inquired about your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, or when did you last uh, reflect on your relationship with yourself, um, your family, your partners, your friends, your kids, your siblings, when did you last reflect on your actions and what that looks like for, um, uh, you know, better relationships with them and your own peace as well? Um, what would it like, what would the courageous step look like for you stepping into that space where you can be the best version of yourself and become the best version of yourself? And that's something that we need to think about more and move from the cerebral so the brain space and kind of move down to the heart space a lot better um because i often ask my clients like what would you need to see within yourself to know that you've shifted um and made that positive change in the positive direction for you and embodied the mind body and spirit of a man of the future who has beautiful relationships with people, who has beautiful communication with people, who lives abundantly, lives fully and happily and at peace with themselves. So like, what does that look like for you? Um, and also for those who love men, um, but are dis decentering men from their lives and or do not identify as a man, I'm big on you join a conversation, join a conversation. I mean, you have to deal with the impacts and the, the negative behavior of a lot of men out there. So I want to hear where you're coming from and what that means for you. I want to hear um, your stories, your questions, um, your perspectives. I want to hear that too. Um, but it's a space for everybody to come in and just be like, look, I'm, I, I, this is what I'm going through. Like, do you know how I can manage that and deal with this So, as well? And do you have any resources? And I'm building more and more resources, whether that be hypnotic scripts or um, through the newsletter or through this podcast or through the book. Um, and I'm just creating more so that people can have something to go to, to listen to, to watch, um, to think about, to ask questions to. And I'm here. I'm here to be able to kind of triage some of those things so that we can have more conversations around that stuff um especially if it will help the people in your life um yeah and this is why it matters to me um yeah the health of men and boys matters and there is a lot of work to do uh, you know i i understand what i'm up against <laughs> i understand that there are a lot of men listening to a lot of men that sound good, that look flashy, that look um, the part. And there are a lot of men, men that are telling, telling men how they should 
the acting and you know the external validation that is necessary that they feel is necessary for men uh, to have to be considered a man and i just look at it and i think to myself you don't need that to be considered a man you just there are certain qualities that you need to have to be considered an upstanding person a respectful person someone who is valuable and feels valuable with inside themselves um and i'm working through this podcast to be able to kind of provide you with an alternative perspective um yeah because a lot of men we haven't spent a lot of time understanding what it means to be a man what it means to be a man on an emotional and a spiritual level and we understand the material the finances you need to have this salary that's what people think they need you need to have this kind of body that's what people think they need but what do you need on an emotional level what do you need on a spiritual level um and that's the journey so that is the hard part and that's where i'm going to wrap up uh today um feel free to reach out to me um on tiktok i'm over at by alex holmes over there you can join the new um instagram page which is the hard part podcast i have a have a look over there where you'll just find clips of these podcasts you can always drop me a message over there um as well you can um follow the newsletter which is by alexholmes.substack.com and let me know if there's any particular conversations you want to have um on the podcast and um i would be open to hearing your suggestions and what you guys want to hear and what you want to see um the kind of guests you want to hear the kind of episodes and topics you want to talk about um i'm very big on that collaboration with you guys um and i'm looking forward to understanding and hearing more from you as well and um yeah i would say reach out to me on those places and i'm looking forward to doing more with you so until next time let's get this journey going um and here's to moving forward and making strides until next time peace out